In this lecture, we introduce the circuit model for an important circuit element known as the operational amplifier, or op-amp. We also introduce a simplified or ideal model for the op-amp and show how to use this model for the analysis of a simple op-amp circuit known as the unity gain buffer. Well, an operational amplifier is an integrated circuit whose circuitry is commonly modeled as I've shown here. Now, whereas voltage sources, current sources, and resistors that we've considered so far in this course have had two terminals that could be connected to a circuit, an op-amp has three. There's something called a positive input, a negative input, and an output. Now, the circuitry within that's contained within an op-amp can be rather complicated, but this simple model that I've shown here serves great utility when we analyze op-amp circuits. Now, for our simple model, there's a resistor of resistance Ri between the positive and negative inputs, and the voltage between those inputs is called V sub I. There's also a voltage-controlled voltage source whose voltage is proportional to VI and has this proportionality constant, or gain, of AO. And the current then flows out of this voltage source through a resistor called RO and then to the output. Now, if we were to label the voltages that appear at the positive input, at the negative input, and at the output, as I've shown here, then each of these voltages would refer to a voltage relative to ground. So for instance, V plus would be the voltage at this input terminal relative to ground. V minus would be relative to ground. And if we wanted to know VI, it would be V plus minus V minus. And then this output voltage again is implicitly referenced to our ground. When we use an op-amp in a circuit, we usually use one of these three models. Now an op-amp is an active circuit element, which means that unlike a simple resistor, an op-amp needs to be powered by some sort of power supply in order to operate. The gain, for instance, that's provided by its internal voltage-controlled voltage source doesn't come for free, and this is attained by providing one or more voltage sources to the circuit. Now when this is important to the analysis of an op-amp circuit, we'll show an op-amp within a circuit like this. VCC is, is a power supply voltage and VEE is a power supply voltage. Typically VCC is larger than VEE and in addition to providing power for the op-amp, these voltages specify upper and lower limits to the range of output voltage that an op-amp can provide. Now when the power voltages aren't important for the analysis of an op-amp circuit, we'll often represent the op-amp with a symbol that looks like this. Here, we've explicitly shown the connection to ground, which can be an important reminder to us that current flowing into or out of any of the input or output terminals has a return path to ground. Now finally, we'll also sometimes use a symbol like this that makes both the power supplies and the ground connections implicit. Well now I'd like to use an op-amp to build a very useful circuit that's called a unity gain buffer. To do this, I'll connect the positive input to a voltage like this. So I'll call this voltage source Vs and that will provide a voltage of Vs relative to ground, if I put the other side to ground, at the positive input. Then I'll connect the output back to the negative input like this. So I'll just bring that down, take it across, and up and connect it. And because I'm feeding the output back to the input, we say that this circuit contains feedback. And because we're feeding the output to the negative input terminal, we call this negative feedback. Now finally, I'll label the output voltage relative to ground as VO 
And what I'd like to do is analyze this circuit to see how the output voltage relates to the input voltage Vs. Now to do this I have a fairly simple circuit that has one resistor, a voltage controlled voltage source, whose voltage depends on the voltage across this resistor, and another resistor. Now the way this is written is a little unfamiliar to people that are or the way that it's drawn is a little unfamiliar if you're new to circuits. So what I'd like to do is redraw this circuit in a way that may make a lot more sense. Well, in this figure I've redrawn the op-amp circuit that we just had. Let's see if that makes sense. Well, if I define this node as my ground, then I have the voltage source coming from ground to the positive input of the op-amp. I have the voltage controlled voltage source coming from the ground through the resistor RO to the output and then I've connected the output to the negative input of the op amp. So this should be the same circuit and what we'd like to do is figure out what V0 is relative to Vs. So here's what I'll do. I'll define this node as V0, which it is. That's V0 relative to ground. And then what I'll do is note that VI is VS minus V0. Okay, then I can write a very simple node voltage equation for this node. So the current flowing in this direction is V0 minus VS over RI and then the current flowing in this direction is V0 minus A0 VI. So that's a V0. And then VI is VS minus V0 here. And then we divide that by the resistance R0. And that must be equal to 0. So now if I group the terms with V0, we have a 1 over Ri plus, well, we have a 1 over R0 and a A0 over R0. So let me write that as 1 plus over R0. That multiplies V0. And then I put the Vs terms on the other side. So what do we have there? We've got uh, 1 over R1, Ri, and then a A0 over R0. And all of that multiplies Vs. So now if I want an expression for V0, the output voltage here, well, that's related to Vs in this way. Now what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by Ri. So that will turn this equation, this side, into 1 plus A0 times Ri over Ro. And on this side we'll have a 1 plus, 1 plus A0 times Ri over RO. And that's all times Vs. And so now we need to know something about these values. A0, RI, and R0. Well it turns out for operational amplifiers two things are true. One, this gain is much, much bigger than one. This gain could be 10,000 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, hundreds of thousands. So very, very big number for the gain. And the ratio of Ri to Ro is also very large. So that's much, much larger than 1. So when this is true, if you look at this ratio, well, if A0 is a very big number compared to 1 and Ri plus R over R0 is a very big number compared to 1, then these 1's aren't going to matter and the difference between A0 and 1 plus A0 isn't much. So this whole ratio will go to 1 and this would go just to Vs.
So in this case, the output voltage is just the input voltage. Now let's see the consequence of this. What this means, if this voltage is just the input voltage, then that means that this voltage VI, which is the difference between the input at the positive terminal and the input at the negative terminal, must get very close to zero, and the amount of current then that's flowing through that resistor is very close to zero. So under this circumstance, this voltage is zero, and this current here is zero, the current flowing into the positive, and if we think of this as the current flowing into the negative input terminal, that's also zero. So what we'll do in our next lecture is look at the consequence of this. Any time when we have an op-amp circuit hooked up with negative feedback, we're going to use this simplified model where we assume that the current flowing into the two input terminals is zero and the voltage across them is zero and we'll see if that can give us some insight into solving circuits that involve op amps without having to deal with the inner workings provided we make the assumption that the gain is very large and the ratio of this input resistance to output resistance is also very large.